Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R330 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on mass updates. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R330 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's hop into it. This is going to be uh, one of my favorite videos in the series as a whole. Uh, this video is on how to do mass updates. Uh, we're going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to run mass updates, which is going to include the, uh, the firmware, the BIOS, the onboard diagnostics, the NIC card, the RAID card, plus a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, so let's just hop into it. Hey guys, it's Ben with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to perform mass updates. Dell has an awesome feature that's built into the lifecycle controller that allows you to update all of your server's firmware. These updates update things such as the BIOS, iDRAC, RAID cards, network cards, onboard diagnostics, and much, much more. It's best practice to have an up-to-date system. It's really just a centralized area to run all of these updates and to get your system fully up-to-date. So let's go ahead and get started. First, you wanna go ahead and boot up your server. And during post, you wanna press F10 so we can enter the lifecycle controller. And once we're in the lifecycle controller, you wanna to navigate to settings on the left-hand side of the screen. Once you click settings, go ahead and click network settings. And in here, you can go ahead and pick the desired NIC port. We're going to go ahead and stick with NIC port 1. And then under the IPv4 network settings, we're going to go ahead and set a static IP address. If you don't know how to do this, we will have a video later on in the series that will show you how to set a static IP address, as well as um, set an IP address via DHCP but we're gonna go ahead and put our static IP address in here. So these numbers, they're gonna look a little bit different just depending on how your network is configured. So like I said, if that's something you're interested in, stay tuned for later on in the series and you'll be able to see how to do this. You can do this via DHCP as well, and if not, that's probably a little bit easier, but in this case, we're just gonna go ahead and set that static IP address and by doing so, this is what's going to give us internet access. And this internet access is what we're going to need in order to access the updates. So once you have set your IP address, go ahead and save the settings and go back to the lifecycle controller home screen. And from here, you wanna go up and navigate to firmware update on the left-hand side of the screen. And then you wanna click on launch firmware update. In here, you want to choose the network share option. And once you choose that, go ahead and click on next. In here, click HTTPS. And for the share name slash address, you want to go ahead and put downloads.dell.com. And then you are free to go to the very bottom of the screen and click on next. This might take a little bit of time to load, but what this is going to do is it's going to verify the selection and it's going to pull all of the updates from that network share. So we'll just go ahead and fast forward real quick. So you might get a message, a warning message right here. It's going to say HTTPS server is using an invalid certificate. The security certificate presented by the server is expired or is not valid for the specified server name. Do you want to continue? No need to worry about this. It's just since we are using um, an older server that no longer really has continued support anymore, um, it's not gonna have that up-to-date certificate. So we can just go ahead and click on yes. No need to worry about this. So once that is done loading, you will be faced with the firmware update screen. And this is the screen where you'll be able to select all of the updates you want. So if we scroll through here, you can see things um, like updates for diagnostics, you know, OS drivers pack, you know, BIOS. You can see stuff for our NIC, our RAID, um, you know, the integrated Dell remote access controller, or, you know, the iDRAC onboard diagnostics. So there's a whole lot of stuff in here. And so once you've picked everything, you can just go ahead and click apply. 
and it'll start downloading the update packages. This might take a little bit of time, especially if you have selected uh, multiple different updates. So again, we'll go ahead and fast forward here. And once this is done downloading, then the actual updates will start. So all of our update packages have been downloaded and now the updates have officially started. So this may take about an hour or so. It took us about an hour, but it could take longer than that. It could take multiple hours for that matter. Um, but really from this point, it's just hands off. There's nothing you really need to do because all of those updates will just run its course. And that's how we do it. That's how we perform mass updates. Like I said, it's, it's an awesome feature that Dell has. And if you wanted to, you could do these same updates from iDRAC. Um, I just think it's a little bit easier to do it directly from Lifecycle Controller. You just hook up that network share. You're able to pull down all of the updates you need. And it's very, very convenient. And like I said, it's just best practice to make sure that your system is as up to date as it possibly can be. If you guys had any questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video or found it useful, go ahead and click that like and smash that subscribe. If you're interested in purchasing a custom built server, whether it's HP, Dell, Supermicro, go ahead and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Take care, guys.